Okay, so welcome back to this uh, video on the derivation of Holder's inequality. Okay, uh, so what we have done so far is we've started off with x, uh, which is a sequence, uh, x1, x2, uh, x3, um, etc., such that it's an element of LP, an LP space, such that P is greater than 1. Uh, we started off with y, which was a sequence y1, y2, uh, y3, etc., uh, which was an element of LQ, uh, such that Q was the conjugate exponent of P, uh, meaning that 1 over P plus 1 over Q was equal to 1. Okay, and then what we did is we said, let's define x bar uh, to be the sequence, um, well, um, we're going to we're going to define x bar, which we showed was also an element of LP, and we're, the way we're going to define it is x bar i, each component is going to be uh, the component, the corresponding component from the original sequence x, uh, divided by uh, this normalizing constant, which is the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of x i to the power of p, divided by, uh, well, to the power of 1 over p, and uh, then we had y bar, uh, which was an element of LQ, uh, and the way that we defined that was that y bar i was going to be equal to y i uh, divided by uh, the equivalent normalizing constant i is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus y i to the power of q uh, divided by 1 over q. Okay, uh, so that's where we got to so far, proving that both of those real piece are, are, are elements of the LP space, or LQ space. And now what we're going to do is apply uh, Young's inequality. So Young's inequality states that alpha times beta, if alpha and beta are positive real numbers, so alpha is greater than zero, beta is greater than zero, and p is greater than one, and q is the conjugate exponent of p, so one over p plus one over q, is equal to 1, then alpha beta is less than or equal to alpha to the power of p over p plus beta to the power of q over q. So we're going to let alpha be equal to the modulus of x bar i, so where i is just some fixed number, and uh, beta is going to be equal to the modulus of y i. So we're going to let i uh, vary over, you know, it could be any one of the natural numbers. So it could be equal to 1, it could be equal to 2. The thing that we're going to come up with is going to be valid whatever i is. So uh, we're just basically letting i be any general one at the moment. Uh, so uh, applying this to, um, to we, uh, applying Young's inequality to these two values, we get that the modulus of x bar i times the modulus of y bar i, which we know is just the modulus of x, r, x bar i times y bar i, uh, is less than or equal to uh, the modulus of x bar i uh, divided by, uh, to the power of p divided by p, uh, plus the modulus of y bar i to the power of q over q. Okay, so now what we can say is that's true for all i, true no matter what i is, no matter, well, uh, no matter what i is an element of the natural numbers you pick. So it cannot be 2.5, it does need to be an element of the natural numbers, i.e. it does need to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Uh, but if, if that's true no matter which one of those you pick. Uh, so what we can do is we can say that sum over i is equal to 1 uh, to some finite value n, modulus of x bar i, y bar i, and basically if if each one of the corresponding terms, so for uh, i is equal to 1, this is true, i is equal to 2, this is true, i is equal to 3, all the way up to i is equal to n. If it's all true, then if we sum up all the bits of this side, then it is going to be less than or equal to the sum of the bigger bits on the other side. Uh, so uh, let's uh, put these summations separate. x bar i to the p over p, uh, plus the summation i is equal to 1 to n, y bar i, Q. So basically what we can do now is we can take the limit as n approaches infinity and if all of these terms are going to be less than or equal to all of these terms uh, then uh, that implies that the limit as n approaches infinity of um, this sequence of terms, all of the terms here are less than or equal to these terms here so it implies that the limit of these this sequence here is going to be less than or equal to the limit of this sequence here so modulus of x bar i modulus of y bar i is going to be less than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of um, the modulus, uh, well the sum i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of x bar i to the p uh, divided by p plus the, uh, sorry I've missed off the limit, the limit as n approaches infinity 
of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of y bar i to the q over q. Okay, uh, so now what we do is we pull out the p and the q from here and we rewrite this as the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity modulus x bar i, y bar i, is less than or equal to 1 over p, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity. And remember, when we write the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity, we mean exactly the... Th this is exactly what we mean. Or rigorously, we mean the limit of the partial sums. Uh, so view the partial sums as sequences, and we're talking about the limit of that sequence, uh, which is perfectly well defined in real analysis. Uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity modulus of x bar i to the power of p divided by p plus 1 over q times the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of y bar i to the power of q over q. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Now, uh, oh dear, what have I done? No! Uh, the whole point is I pulled those p's and those q's out, so get rid of those. So I pulled the p out to the front. Now, uh, we calculated in the previous video what the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of x bar i was equal uh, to the power of p was equal to, and we calculated what the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity y bar i to the power of q was equal to. So have I got that calculation somewhere? Uh, um, okay, um, oh, I don't know where it's gone, no. Um, right. Uh, okay, uh, but we did calculate that. We calculated that x bar, uh, that if we summed up all of these bits, uh, they were going to equal 1. So this summation added up to 1, and this summation added up to 1. So we get that this is less than or equal to 1 over p plus 1 over q. Now, firstly, that's the proof. Uh, that proves that this sequence actually converges in the first place because it's uh, going up up to some, well, at first it's the summation of a bunch of non-negative things, so it's monotonically increasing, the sequence is monotonically increasing, and any, and we know as a basic theorem from real analysis that any monotonically increasing sequence, provided it's bounded, will have a limit, so if it's bounded by 1 over q plus 1 over p, this does have a limit, so it does converge. So we get that the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity, firstly that it converges, and secondly that it converges to something less than or equal to 1 over p plus 1 over q. But we picked 1 over q and 1, uh, 1 over p and 1 over q very, very cleverly. We said that these were going to be conjugate exponents, so this is precisely 1. So we get that the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x bar i times y bar i is equal, well, is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so now all that's left to do is plug in what x bar i and y bar i in ter are in terms, of, uh, in terms of x and y. So, uh, we can now plug in, uh, this is equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of x to the power, uh, x i divided by the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity, and don't, ah yes, I should invent some new variables, let's say this is j, uh, so that we don't confuse, uh, don't confuse this summation over i with this summation down here, uh, of the modulus of x, uh, j, um, to the, uh, p, uh, d over 1 over p, so that is exactly how we defined, uh, x bar i to be equal, we defined it to be equal to x i divided by this, and then y bar i we defined to be equal to y i, divided by uh, the summation over k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of y k to the power of q uh, to the power of 1 over 1 over q. Okay, and take the modulus of that, and that has to be less than or equal to 1. Okay, so we're really close now to deriving Holder's inequality. So basically, now what we just do is apply uh, the fact that uh, the modulus of um, a times b is just the modulus of a times the modulus of b to pull out uh, the modulus of these things here. Okay, so we'll get that this is the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi times yi at ti uh, sorry, the modulus of that at times 1 over the modulus of this summation uh, j is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xj to the power of p uh, all of that to the power of 1 over p, and then the modulus of that, and then times 1 uh, divided by uh, the modulus of the summation k is equal to 1 
to infinity of the modulus of y k to the q all over one uh, to the power of one over q, and then modulus of that, and we know that, that is less than or equal to one. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the modulus of these things, these are just positive numbers. Well, they're just they're non-negative numbers, sorry, yes. Uh, the modulus is always non-negative. To the power of p, it's going to remain non-negative. And then when we sum it all up, it's going to become something non-negative, converge to something non-negative. And then when we do it to the power of 1 over p, it's going to be something non-negative. Uh, so these are both non-negative numbers, so we can omit the modulus sign. They are also just constants with respect to this summation over 1. So we can pull them out. So we get that 1 over uh, the summation um, summation j is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xj to the p uh, to the power of 1 over p times 1 over uh, the summation k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yk um, to the power of q to the power of 1 over q times the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi yi uh, is less than or equal to 1. And then just multiply both sides uh, by uh, the summation j is equal to 1 to infinity of modulus of xj to the power of p over 1 over p and multiply it by uh, the summation j k is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yk to the q to the power of 1 over q. And we get that the summation i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity the modulus of xi yi uh, is less than or equal to take these two things onto the other side and we get uh, the uh, summation j is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of xj to the p over 1 over p times the summation k is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of yk to the q over 1 over q uh, and that is Holder's inequality there. So I'll box that and I will write Holder's inequality. And I think it's got a funny little one of those German things uh, above the O. Holder's inequality. Okay, uh, and we are going to use that in the uh, derivation of Minkowski's inequality.